Hey guys, this is Genjiro and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to be looking at using line styles and I'm going to demonstrate that by trying to produce this sort of staples on fabric kind of pattern. Now for the purposes of covering line styles, we're just going to really be touching on the basics, but we'll be covering a whole lot of other things as we go through the whole process of creating this image. So to get started, I'm just going to create a new document that's of HD dimensions just because that set of dimensions matches well with how I'm going to align my text. And the first thing I want to do is fill the background with a pattern. And uh, we can do that simply by just clicking on the flood fill tool and then right clicking on the material and clicking other. And then from here you can go to pattern and there's a lot of preset patterns but there's one in particular that I loaded uh, from textures.com. It's kind of a fabric type uh, pattern. And uh, you know if you get a seamless one then you can load it into the materials under patterns and then adjust the scale to get the level of fidelity that you're looking for. So with that pattern selected, I can just click and then fill and you can see that it's sort of like this fabric-y texture for our background. So next I'm going to add our text, which is going to be sort of the shape for our um, you know, staple text, if you will. Uh, you can see I'm using the alphabet type font and uh, just so that we can see it a little bit better, I'm going to change the material color and you'll see we're just doing the outline, not the fill. And so then we can click on to the canvas and then type whatever it is we want to type. So, and what we'll see is with this font, you know, it, it, it there, there's a fair amount of space, you know, it, even in the thin parts and you kind of want that just so that, you know, your, your lines don't end up overlapping and you want to make sure there's enough space in between letters, otherwise your staples are seemingly going to be welded together, uh, which maybe is, is what you want, it's up to you. Uh, but once you've kind of got the size right, you can center it by just using this nice little button here. Uh, and, and one word about uh, the width of the line, um, you kind of want it to be something pretty thin, otherwise when we apply the bevel, it's not really going to look like staples or like little metal bars. It's going to look more like like these peaked metal rods. So uh, just something to play with. So now that we have our text, the next thing we want to do is actually convert this to path because this is what's going to allow us to play with the line style. So we've converted it to path and we have it selected and then we can go to our pen tool and then what you'll see is when all the nodes start to show up then you know that you're able to work on this guy as if it were a set of lines and you'll see the line style box now is available. So let's go ahead and click on this to extend. And what you'll see is at first you can choose from you know many different existing line styles that PaintShop Pro comes with. And, and just from clicking like one of the, you know, it's like a dot and a dash, you know, kind of a pattern, you can see that gets applied to the lines on our text. But let's say, you know, like um, we want to do something like what I was suggesting or what you saw earlier is sort of like a dashed line here, right? So no little dots in between, but just dashed, line, dashed lines with the small gap in between. Um, and, and this is one that I created. And the way that you can do that is by just starting with one of the given lines. Uh, you know, this one is saying it's currently selected, but you could select any of these and then go to custom. And then once custom comes up, then you can see that you've got a whole lot of different options here. Like um, you can change what is the shape of, of uh, like a starting point, if you will, on your line. You can adjust the size of that starting point. So you can see by, by adjusting this, like a dot starts to appear, which is the shape that we selected earlier. And then even even from here, you can adjust the length of the line or we can add more, right? So here's how you can start to get more of these patterns, like a double dot with a lot of space. And so I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail about like the mechanics of how you kind of play with all these different things. 
but what you can see is that you know a gap indicates a gap and you know a gap indicates another gap and then these bars indicate lines and then all of these caps you see here will specify what is the shape that's going to show up at these different node points so I'm going to cancel but let's come back to the original line that I'm showing, this dashed line. And what you'll see is really all that makes up this thing is the length of the line that you see here, which kind of ends at 40. And then, you know, this, this kind of smaller gap in between that's suggesting where this whole pattern repeats. And it's maybe like two ticks wide. So let's keep that in mind because what we're going to do is actually overlay another line that's going to be correlated with this same set of, of values. So now we have our first set of text with our dashed lines and this is going to kind of represent those air quotes staples. And so then next I'm going to duplicate this because we're going to create a separate line style to try to fill in these gaps with dots so it can kind of act like holes in the fabric. So I'm going to rename this top one as uh, colored lines. And then I'm going to rename this next one below it as the holes. So now I'm going to hide the colored lines so that we can see what we're doing with the holes a little bit easier. So once again, selecting and we still have the pen tool. So we've got our nodes for our lines here. But just to make this a little bit easier to distinguish from the other layer, I'm going to change the color to black. And so then now what we're going to do is pick a different line style and, and more so maybe if we were doing this from scratch and it would take a little bit longer, but um, I already have another line style in mind, um, but I wanted to show this one. And so this one is kind of a similar thing, but what we'll see now is it has little dots on it. And if we turn the original color one on, what you'll see is those dots line up very perfectly with where the gaps are in the original line style. So now if we, if with our holes line selected, if we were to go to custom, what you'll see is that even though I've made the dots, the end cap, the dot bigger so that you can actually see it, I've kept the pattern exactly the same as the other one. And so this is what allows those two to be lined up the way that they are. And so in a way, you naturally can get the holes to show up in the gaps in between uh, the lines of the other line style. And that's kind of the main point that I wanted to target, you know, in focusing on line styles in this particular video is just showing how you can be strategic and aligning them. But now we're just going to kind of play with a few other things with some blend layers and some blurring and uh, some layer properties to try to make this thing look like some staples sitting on top of this fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the holes layer just for, for uh, destructive purposes. Uh, I want to blur this, and the only way you can do that is if it's a raster layer. So I'm going to now say Adjust Blur, Gaussian Blur. And here it's going to say, hey, got to convert to a raster if you want to do this operation. So, so now we've kind of rasterized that and applied some blur. And you can see that kind of makes it look much more like a shadow kind of a, a hole rather than this like perfectly crisp circle. And then we're going to change the blend mode of this to burn. And I think that's what's going to give sort of that feel like in the fabric, like this is more of a hole rather than uh, just like a dark spot. So next I want to create a drop shadow for the color lines because I think this is going to enhance the 3D effect. Now you can do this with a layer property. However, I found that the layer property doesn't quite give me the flexibility I need to get the crispness of the shadow that, that I'm going for. So instead, what I'm actually going to do is duplicate this. And then once again, I'm going to blur it, which is going to rasterize it. 
So we'll go to adjust, blur, and this time I'll probably just say blur more. I don't need as much blur as a, as a Gaussian blur provides. And I'm gonna rename this layer Drop Shadow. And then I'm gonna select the pick tool. And then what we're gonna do is kinda of just, you know, with the arrow keys, kinda of move it to the right and move it down. And one thing I forgot to do is actually change the color of this layer to black. And so one real simple way we can do that is to just go to Adjust, Brightness, Contrast, and Threshold. And if you bring the threshold like pretty high, then it's gonna just make everything black. So then now if we bring back our color lines, you can kind of see that, you know, that creates this nice crisp uh, drop shadow. And we'll play with the positioning a little bit after we've kind of applied the bevel effect on the, the colored lines. So that's what we'll do next. So if we select the color lines, then what we can do is click on this layer styles button here. And then we'll turn on preview on image so we can see the effect and then we'll click on bevel. And then with bevel selected, you can already see that it kind of has this effect of creating like a 3D look for these, these little segments here. Uh, you can increase the size if you kind of want to make it a little bit more dramatic. You can increase the opacity, which kind of makes it a little bit shinier and, and makes it stand out a little bit more. So I kind of like using a higher value in this case. Uh, but it does kind of wash out the color a little bit because of those highlights. So you just got to decide how much of that you want. And then we'll hit OK. So we're looking pretty good. We've got like our, our you know, beveled little rods here and, and we've got our little shadows for holes. And if the shadows for the holes seem a little too strong, you can always decrease the opacity to, to kind of make it not, not so distracting. Um, it's kind of up to you. Up to you. Now, the interesting part is, is it, you know, for this to feel more like staples, uh, it kind of has to have like a more gray or or actually, interestingly enough, a brass-ish kind of color. And uh, I, I really actually stumbled upon this on accident. Um, but, I, but I discovered that, so if you take the background, and this particular texture I think matters because of the variance that it has naturally in its pattern, and we drag it to the top, and then if we change its blend mode to Hue Legacy, then it has this sort of magical effect of like adding just enough hue variance to these, these raised little, you know, segments that it, to me, it gives it sort of this really cool looking brass uh, color effect. Now I do want to enhance the the you know both of the the luminance and the color of these the seemingly metal metal parts here, but I can't I can't do it when this is in this uh, you know vectorized layer group here. So once again, I'm going to duplicate this uh, and I'm going to uh, rasterize it. So then we can hide the original, and then I'll just rename this. And then I'm gonna put it in a layer group so that I can use adjustment layers. And we can do this by clicking on this layers menu button and saying new layer group. And if you hold shift, it'll do it automatically without any dialog boxes. And so then now on top of this raster metal lines, I can add a levels adjust. And then from here, just dragging from the right to the left has the effect of kind of punching that just a little bit, right? Just trying to get it a little shinier. And, uh, but I do really want to have the emphasis on that sort of brass, you know, color with the hue variants. So then we can go back to adjustment layers and add a vibrancy layer. And then this is just kind of, you know, to taste, if you will, right? Just just bringing it up enough that you feel like the color is being brought out. You can see it's kind of a little more yellowy and orangey in different spots, which is what I really like. And, you know, we're pretty much there. You know, we can add a little bit more emphasis to the middle if we add some vignettes. So we can create a new raster layer, choose our flood fill tool, and uh, so my favorite um, vignette uh, 
material that you know I like to use where it's simply just you know black color all the way across but then the transparency kind of gradients pretty quickly to full transparency so you get this nice you know dark drop off that that creates a vignette that's a fill gradient color so then we'll just click on our new layer to apply it and I think you know blend wise it looks most natural when we use uh, soft light and you know you can play with emphasis uh, you know by decreasing opacity uh, or if you need to add more you can always duplicate and there you have it so just a, a quick tutorial to kind of demonstrate the basics of using line styles on uh, you know a, a vector line or, or a pen line if you will uh, and then just covering a few other different fun effects to kind of ultimately pull together something that looks like you know metal staples punched into some fabric board to create some letters as always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new videos that I post, click the subscribe button and you can check the video description for ways to support and engage the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.